Okay. Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining our monthly webinar uh, for Rapido. I'm glad to see you here. Uh, I hope that uh, you're having either a good evening or uh, a good start of the day. Uh, I see many people here that are joining from different zones of the world. Um, so let's start with uh, sharing. So I'm going to share my slides. And as always, we'll make sure that we have time to ask questions. Um, if uh, there are any questions at some point, uh, so bear with me just a second. Okay, here we are. Okay, perfect. I hope you're all seeing my screen and can hear me well. Um, so let's just see. Uh, so uh, we'll be covering today what's happening with the Rapido community. Actually, a lot is happening with the Rapido community. So it's good to have this update today. We'll go through the November release uh, highlights and uh, we'll have our usual and loved uh, format for wrapping up so you can ask questions. And then we'll open it up for questions. Okay, so the community, uh, a lot of movement in terms of the growth of Rapido around the world. Uh, we have new countries that have joined Rapido. This is fantastic. They're starting uh, or, or re already started their implementation. So we have South Africa in and New Zealand. Um, and, uh, and it's always fantastic to see the growth. And we also want to welcome our new libraries that went live around the globe since uh, we met. So again, we have uh, a great variety of customers that went live. And as always, I'd like to say they, of course, will have an impact on uh, your pods and more lending and uh, more borrowing. And the community growing is amazing. So just... Um, Touching about these new um, members and areas of the world that have joined are joining Rapido. Uh, wanted to highlight uh, some of the pods that we have or the new pods that we have. So we've talked about the international pod already, and I think uh, there's place uh, at some point. Uh, it's it's very small yet. Uh, it would be great to see it uh, grow. Various initiatives that I know the working group is thinking about. Uh, together with us, uh, such as sharing practices on what to do with international lending. But again, uh, we're open to changing either the terms of the pod or helping the community uh, with lending uh, internationally if needed. Uh, we, we can share practices, um, not exactly now, but this is an idea that uh, we have so that we can increase that pod. But as you can see, really the community is, is expanding. We have New South Wales, uh, a New South Wales pod, which is also a new pod, and we have the ANC pod, which includes Australia and New Zealand, so uh, an international pod uh, in some way. And again, I want to remind you that if you are interested in joining those pods, uh, there is the form uh, that uh, Megan created, but also there is, uh, you can always email Megan and let her know, you can email me. Um, and just let us know that you're interested in joining one of those new pods, and we'll make sure that you're updated as we add them as, and as more uh, institutions come in with Rapido. So even though it looks like a million years ago, uh, we were recently in, uh, we were recently at Igloo, and we had the chance there to talk a lot about Rapido. Also, uh, the wonderful chance to meet uh, a lot of the institutions that are using Rapido. And it was wonderful, uh, as always, to meet in person. So I wanted to um, share the experience with you and share one of the slides. I always like to bring one of the slides of those conferences. Um, and uh, this is, um, again, one of the slides you might have seen it before, and it's good if you've seen it before which are actually our bases, the building blocks for Rapido. And as always, we like to think about our developments focusing on those areas. So Connect is very basic. We want to see uh, either the community growing, but of course, not only growing, just making it, making it available for the community to share, uh, even if you're using a different system, but really focusing on that global and equitable collection and the collaboration of the community. So a lot, of, a lot of efforts on that area. We continue to think about the end user as the core of Rapido and what are the developments that we should be doing there. 
and there's still lots of ideas and lots of developments to come and the roadmap is full of uh, ideas. And of course, uh, we want you to be able to scale up, uh, to do more with less, to be able to concentrate on the difficult resource sharing requests, but be able to handle the volumes um, as possible. So uh, as fast and efficiency, efficiently as possible. What I did wanted to, since we share it in, in Eagle, I feel it's okay to share it here, is that we're doing a lot of work that uh, at least Megan and I don't share with you during uh, this webinar. So you don't see the work in the release notes, but we're doing a lot of work to support uh, the Rapido that is going to work with uh, other library systems. And I wanted just to point out uh, the development partnership with, that we have with Drew University. They use Folio as their library system. They don't use AMA. And we're already uh, full steam working on, develop, on the developments to enable this um, Rapido for, for institutions that are using other systems. And this is great. And we also have Sierra ones uh, that are working with us. So it means um, you would be thinking, what does it mean for me uh, that you share this information? Again, is this a uh, community that is growing potentially, of course, beyond ALMA? And I think it's uh, wonderful. We've had the opportunity uh, to uh, meet other customers. And Megan uh, was uh, in uh, the NWIL conference and customers that uh, were there or institutions that were there presented and talked about Rapido. So again, uh, a wonderful opportunity to, miss you, to meet you in person. And we hope that we can do that as well in the future and hear your stories. And those stories uh, are heard by other institutions and it's wonderful that you're sharing them. We also had uh, an event in the UK, uh, the uh, UKI meeting. It, was, it took place on September. And again, it was wonderful to hear the, the, the stories and um, the case the case studies by the community um, and in, just wanted to share some of the numbers by the way this this information is out there but if you compare 2021 to 2022 we see an increased percent of requests and now we're reaching the end of this year so hopefully we'll be able to show you more numbers but we already know that the first six months of 2023 there were more than nine I, I can't even say the number, 900,000 requests placed um, in our systems uh, during uh, the first half of the year. And we'll, have, we'll know more uh, at the end of the year, the beginning of 2024. And um, in terms of document delivery, as you all know, we have the commitment of 20 to 24 hours, but we're seeing that the average is lower than 10 hours, which is also super, super fantastic uh, for our users and for uh, your staff. Okay, so what's happening with the working group? You've probably seen this, but I did want to share this. And also I think we have permission uh, from Sarah from uh, Ithaca, uh, just to share where we are a little bit with NERS. So the uh, we have a list of developments that the top requests are now with us, with Ex Libris and our team. And the team is now reviewing all, each and the, each request and um, answering and giving some solutions, alternatives, or assigning comp complexity points. So we're at this stage of, of the nurse, which is great because it's our first nurse. And the second, and we should finish this, uh, we must finish this uh, round uh, of uh, review by November 14th. So that's coming up pretty, pretty soon. And then the voting will start again. And then you will have uh, the opportunity to choose which developments will be done in the framework of NERS. So I'm putting here uh, Sarah's email. I don't know, I don't even know if Sarah's here, but Sarah, your email is here. If uh, there's any problem at the time of connecting for uh, voting, you have to be part of Igloo and Eluna in order to vote. Um, but uh, stay tuned uh, in a couple of weeks, two, around two weeks, you will be able to vote and influence how our systems will look. Okay. Now, um, regarding something that's happening next week, I hope you've seen it. If not, it's good that you're here and joining me. Megan is giving a um, 
session on the Ex Libris resource sharing directory. I really recommend that you guys attend. I know that uh, Rapido by default, Rapido members by default are already in the directory, but it's still important to understand how the directory works, what it gives you. But also very important to invite your colleagues from Alma to join this session. So if you have a friend that has Alma and does resource sharing, it would be great if you could ask them uh, or suggest that they join. I will put the links. Um, we did send this with the monthly email, but I will put the links at when I close my sharing of this presentation. I will put the links on the chat so you have them, them handy. But if for some reason they're not that handy, just uh, you can connect with me or with uh, Megan and we'll provide the login information for that, the registration for that uh, webinar. Okay. So we're moving forward and uh, let's take a look at what's happening next week, I think. I don't remember when, but exactly, or in a week and a half, the release highlights. And let's talk about the connect. So before I talk about the enhancement that we did here on the hybrid pods, I really want to talk about the idea of the pods. So uh, those of you that are already live with Rapido, you know we have the pods and they're um, publicly those pods that you can publicly join according to your region. If you can meet the terms of the pods, they're in our knowledge center. And you can, as we said at the beginning, you can send us an email, ask to join. We also have private pods, by the way. It's something um, that it's not unusual. And uh, a very good example of a private pod would be a consortial pod. So a consortia that's using Rapido might have their own first priority pod, which is the consortial pod. And it's not open, does not listed in the Knowledge Center. And uh, of course, the consortia needs to approve any addition of any member to that um, to that private pod, but the mechanism is exactly the same mechanism. And we also have what we call hybrid pods. So a hybrid pod is a pod between Rapido members and Alma members. In terms of the hybrid pods is something we've been working a lot recently, uh, past couple of releases and months, doing a lot of improvements to the whole mechanism so that it's easy for everyone. But the whole idea is that in terms of our Rapido institution, it feels and it looks like a regular Rapido pod. Um, from the Alma institutions uh, side, it's not more cumbersome than doing um, a rota, but uh, it enables this easier connection with the Rapido community that they're working. Usually these pods are more closed private pods, okay? They, they are between institutions that are working in some, some type of way. Sometimes it is due to a courier, for example a particular career that is shared. And now to our development. So the first thing I want to say, because hybrid pods is a little bit complex, is that if you don't, you're not part of a hybrid pod, you now know what they are. But secondly, if you if you are not, just don't worry because this part of our <laughs> webinar today is a little bit confusing, but, but I don't want you to worry. So you don't need to pay 100% of attention to this. If you are not part of a, of a hybrid pod, this is irrelevant for you. If you're part of a hybrid pod, what's going to happen from the November release, you can see here that I'm actually at the uh, lending policies tab of the configuration. So it's where actually I have um, my participating items and I have um, uh, uh, the pods. Uh, so if I am Rapido recognizes that I'm part of a hybrid pod, we know how to recognize that, you will see an additional section that has been added, override pod policies for specific hybrid pod partners and uh, add exception. This is what you will see. Again, this will only appear if you have, you're part of a hybrid pod. If you're not part of a hybrid pod, you won't see this option of configuration. So. Don't worry, the fact that you're not seeing it doesn't mean that something is not working. It's just you're not part of a hybrid pod. Okay, so what, what are we doing? What are these exceptions? If you know the pod mechanism, you know that a, a, a member, uh, which is usually a resource sharing library, a member can be part of many pods. So in the same can happen, of course, when you have um, hybrid pods. 
So you might have a pod, for example, which is a pod uh, with uh, the US pod, but you might have members that are part of uh, the hybrid pod in, in uh, the same member is, is part of that pod. Rap the way Rapido works today, and by the way, if, if you have a hybrid pod and everything's working as, expect, as you expect, you don't need to do anything, don't touch it. But if you are working in, in a hybrid pod and your expectation usually will be that the terms of use are used, like in the regular rotas, instead of um, the, the, pod, the, the pod terms, then this will be relevant for you. So it's a very edgy case in some ways, and it's a very particular scenario, but these exceptions will enable you per member, which you are doing resource sharing with, to define whether you want to, for example, only use the terms of use or use first the pod policy. And then if we don't find that particular item in, in the pool of records, but we find something else, use the terms of use. Or if we first, uh, or first use the terms of use and then the pot policy. I think that most cases that are coming from the community will use the first option, which is the terms of use only. But again, I, if everything's working for you and you have a hybrid pod, there's no need to to touch upon this development. There's more documentation on the knowledge center, but this will make uh, enable you to align to what you're expecting to happen in terms of. Uh, those terms uh, when you have a shared member in two, in one hybrid pod and in a in another pod or rota. Okay, um, so here once you've added this, I'm just showing here the lower part of the window where you can add the particular member. When you open this, I didn't bring it up. You'll see only the institutions that are relevant to add to this exception. Okay, I, this was the hardest part of our session today, so the rest is going to be much easier. Uh, okay, so let's talk about uh, making our system more efficient. This is actually something really nice that many people asked for in the past. And uh, again, it's a good opportunity to talk a little bit just for the sake of our new um, institutions that went live and in general. The, the, the possibility to search the global index, so if you don't know that we have the Staff perspective, uh, kind of an equivalent of what your users are experiencing when they search in Primo and receive all of these results. So you can search uh, on the global index, select global index. And then here, what I'm doing is um, performing a search on uh, the term dog. And this is what we're finding. What we added with this release is this section here. So we have a right paint to our results now. And in the right pane, you will see here which are the potential physical lenders. So you have an indication of who's holding this book, this resource. Now, this uh, development has a continuation next month. Uh, so make sure you attend next month's uh, meeting uh, because we're missing here pod information, which will be released later. So you will also be able to see to which pods uh, this resource is associated. It might help you to make some decisions. In a way, this is very similar to the find partner functionality, just that it's coming from the type global title index and from the results. So what you're seeing here is information such as whether um, this particular institution has defined themselves in the directory, whether the item is available and requestable, which is fantastic information. Let's talk about a different workflow with using this global title index. So I'm here on the boring request, and we have this option to enrich the global index. What is the meaning of this? So I created a borrowing request. Here it is, one of my favorite uh, searches. Uh, the Sleeping Beauties, the request was created, not even associated to anyone. I already know because of my mediation rules, uh, probably also stopped because of the mediation rule, that this is missing uh, an ISBN. Okay, so I already know the metadata is metadata is kind of clunky. So our uh, workflow would be to use that um, those results from the GTI, from the Global Title Index, to enrich this request. So we have under the actions, we have the enrich from Global Index uh, action. 
and um, it's per request, so I'm going to click on it. And this will push me, and you see here that it's a little bit different than the previous window that I showed with the GPI results. It's just showing me, uh, of course, it has it's more um, has more uh, faceting data, uh, not faceting, but it's uh, searching for more data points. And we see here what I uh, wanted, and actually from here, uh, what we want to do is to select and reach the record. But also from this. Uh, particular workflow, you can see here uh, that uh, the information, uh, for example, this particular institution is not in the directory. Um, and of course, we can't, we don't know if the item is available or requestable. But even if you don't know if the item is available or requestable, it's always worth it if you're looking for something that doesn't find a boring to uh, have this information handy. So it's a, it's a good workflow. Now, what information the question should be, what, who's actually appearing here? And it's very similar to the find partner functionality. All of this is based on the data sharing profile configuration. So everyone here in the room, whoever is attending this session, if you don't know if you have set this to yes, run and do it. Um, this has no implications. It's also something that it's needed by the Rapido members, of course, our online institutions as well. So we're talking a lot about this option to enable um, the, uh, the visibility of uh, the holdings to Rapido institutions. So please go and check, enable it. This is actually what's influencing whether you see the information or not. So it's not being on the directory, which is crucial because Rapido members are all on the directory. So said before, even if you're a Rapido library, you need to uh, actually uh, set this to yes, this parameter to yes, in order to, for your institution to appear under other institutions. Megan will probably talk about this also in her session um, next week. But in any case, it's very good to promote and just tell your friends, your online institutions, yourself, just to mark this as yes. What can happen? Nothing needs to happen. It doesn't mean that you're going to get more requests. It doesn't mean that you're starting partnerships without wanting it. It actually doesn't even mean that uh, you're discovering uh, information that is uh, top secret because actually, you know, as uh, interlibrary loan librarians that usually we go to the discovery systems of other libraries just to check if they have it or not and maybe send them an email, etc. So it's just making this information available between the system and not, not outside of the system. Uh, here you can see uh, where you can find this uh, particular um, setup. So it's under configuration, general, general configuration, data sharing, very easy. Uh, of course, you need the, um, the rights to uh, get into this uh, particular uh, configuration, but uh, I really recommend you do it. Okay, so we're moving forward. And another development that we have uh, for this November release is uh, the alternate, uh, alternate symbol. So we all know that partners come with a, with a symbol, with a code, and this code is, is usually coming uh, with the information of the partner, partner. If it's in their directory, it's coming with the, informa with the information of the directory. Uh, but there is, in many, many cases, we've heard this also a lot of times, the need to identify the partners in a different way. Uh, for example, in order to export them to a system. Okay, this is a very common NetLenders workflow. Uh, there is the need to have this symbol, which is a little bit different and have it uh, exported to a, an external system. And this is uh, the way to hold it. Of course, all of this development is wrapped with all of the needed functionality so uh, on December, on the December release, which is following November, um, after we've released this, analytics will support this. This information will be in analytics. And, um, and this means that you can think out of the box, OK? Or there is no box, right? So this is a field that's in. It's actually being stored on the partner information. You could create, for example, I'm just imagining. I don't even know if there's a case here groups of partners, if you want to group them in some way and then create analytics for this type of uh, partners. This is my idea. I don't know if it really works, but you could use this field to do that. 
You could use this field, as I was saying, to add identifiers that you have for each and each partner, which are different than the one that uh, is being used um, as the main code that's coming in the system. Um, also, if you do want, if it's important for you to include, and I know it might be important, to include that symbol in the communication that you that we're sending, such as the resource sharing shipping sleep letter or the resource sharing return sleep letter or the full incoming sleep letter, you can add that to your letters as well. So it's also supported in that communication. Just uh, for general knowledge, the distribute job also supports the new symbol. So if you're distributing partners, Now to analytics. Okay, so a bunch of new reports uh, for uh, out of the box reports for analytics. Uh, I'm not going to read through each uh, report, but I can show you, for example, uh, the new foreign request cancellation in recent, which is a great report to have. Or um, if we look at the lending resource sharing lending requests field and unfilled. Of course, there is the counterpart, boring requests, fulfilled and unfulfilled. So take a look, see if this helps you and uh, make use of this uh, new report. All right, so that is going to be our November release for now. Please go to the Knowledge Center just to make sure that you have everything covered, including the documentation. And in the frequently asked questions, I did add uh, here the resolved issues. They're also in the documentation. I don't want to read the whole thing again, and you'll find that they're in the documentation. But these are things that came up, questions that we received. So we did want to, at least a slide to appear. Uh, I'll take a very good example. In some casing, cases, selecting the show file on a boring request did not open the associated file. So this is one of the things that have been resolved with the November release. And there is a bunch of other things, uh, like, uh, for example, boring requests were sent twice, which were creating lending requests with duplicate external IDs. So again, something that has been fixed with the November release. Um, so a bunch of good fixes um, and worthwhile just reading through the release notes. OK, and here is uh, one of our frequently asked questions. How do I find requests with active general messages? Right. So we have the message. It is active. Uh, but we discovered that not many people know that actually uh, under general message, you have an active general message uh, facet. And you could uh, definitely facet uh, by the active messages, both in the borrowing and the lending side, and create a set. And uh, for example, define your workflow. So first thing in the morning, I want to check those active general messages or at the end of the day, um, however you want to see this. But this would be a nice way in a very long list to just uh, see which requests have, have active general messages. OK, and another question. Actually, this question can only be presented today because the answer is coming on the November release, but we've been asked this question. So we're, we're going to ask it now. How do I view patron information from the request? So again, this is not something you have now, so don't rush after the webinar and check, I can do this. No, you can't do this. You need to wait for the November release. But one of the things that we've been asked is really how from this view, we already have the view of the patron that is that is requesting something. So again, of course, I'm on the borrowing side, I can see patron information. I can see a lot of information from the patron, uh, but now I can also click here. This is linkable and this will open up uh, the complete patron page with the information um, that I want to see. For this to happen, I think I mentioned it here, just uh, make sure that I, I do mention it. Um, yes, I did write it. Uh, for this to be able to be used, you have a, you have to have user administration administrator role. So uh, just in case you try it and it doesn't work. Okay, this was my last slide. So what I'm going to do now is two things. I'm going to stop the sharing. And before we uh, jump into um, the before we jump into questions. I want to put the links to the session next week so you can share with your friends and also attend to yourself. And
and um, just go ahead and look into those links. I copied them here, so just I'll put them on the chat. Uh, there are two sessions for the two time zones, so just check which time zone is good for you. I didn't divide that. And I see you're having problems with the sound. I really don't know what to do. About Really, really sorry. This is being recorded, and I hope the sound is is fine. Wait, I tell it to everyone. Just a second. Just a second. Everyone, sorry. Okay. One link. And the other link. So just sec. Just check which session is good for you. And. You got those links. It's a little bit messy, but I hope you got those links. Okay. Okay. Uh, is there a transcription option? There probably is a transcription option, which I don't know um, because of the sound. So let me. This is a WebEx question, not a Rapido question. So I'm going to check that if there is one. There should be. Actually, it's a, it's a good suggestion just to have it on always. Um, but I can find it now, so I'll need to check. And I'm really sorry for this session uh, not being exactly um, good in terms of uh, sound. Um, okay, so let's see. Uh, there's a chat where you can put your questions, and uh, there's also Q and A where you can put your questions. And um, I'm gonna give you a second. To, to think if there's uh, something you want to ask um, and also check the chat. Okay. Um, Anything, everything should be documented. Um, so uh, I hope that if, you know, if there's some missing information, you should find it on the Knowledge Center. Um, and uh, I really hope to see you next month. And we're here, the product team is here to support you. And um, if there are no questions, I'm gonna give it a second, a more, one more second, be of, beyond the sound issues, which is terrible. Uh, I'm just going to check that there, there is no questions under the Q&A and, &A. and um, I'm, at least I'm not seeing it then and no questions on the chat specifically. Okay, so good luck and uh, I think next time that we meet you should be already be able to vote uh, for those developments that uh, the community has gathered and a lot of work has been dedicated by the community. So I really want to thank um, the working group and also all of the um, separate individuals that have been working and the duplicating and rephrasing and asking questions just to bring to us the, um, the requests in, in a simple way so that we can work on them. But you should know that a lot of work was invested on that process. There were hundreds of requests. So first of all, also thank you to the community that has been putting this request forward, uh, but also a big, big thanks to our, our wonderful working group. Okay, I'm gonna release you either to your day or to your evening. So take tons of care. Bye-bye everyone.